I just learned some things that blew my mind and I wanna share them with you. In this video, we're talking about chronic cortisol elevation, how it leads to you getting sick, inflamed, moody, and fatigued, and why the problem is not actually your cortisol level itself. I'm Dr. Ashley Frazee. I'm a primary care doctor, and I care really deeply about the whys and hows of fixing the problems my patients come to me with. Let's talk about cortisol in a way that finally explains why you feel tired, inflamed, wired but exhausted, and stuck. I wanna walk you through the two massive things chronic stress does to your body. Number one, it breaks your repair system. And number two, it sabotages your metabolism. Once you understand the biology behind this, you'll finally understand why stress feels like weight gain, inflammation, exhaustion, and burnout. And I think you'll be better equipped to fix the underlying issue. And just remember, this is not medical advice from me to you. I am just a doctor on the internet. I am not your doctor. This video is purely educational. Let's get into it. We all know that when we're stressed, we pump out cortisol. And it seems like everyone wants their cortisol level tested, and I rarely do anything with the information because the problem is not cortisol. Cortisol elevation is a symptom, but here's what happens when you're stressed and elevating your cortisol constantly. You see, one of cortisol's major purposes is to tell your immune system to turn off. Why? Because when you're running from a tiger in the jungle, you don't need your immune system turned on. It's low priority. See, inflammation and immunity are expensive. They use a ton of energy. So cortisol temporarily suppresses inflammation so you don't waste resources during danger. This is a normal response. Now get this, you can become cortisol resistant. And this is the part that nobody talks about, meaning that constantly elevated cortisol causes receptors on your cells that respond to cortisol to down-regulate. It's like when you put up a boundary around that friend that's constantly calling you or you just dismiss the call. So down-regulated cortisol response leads to being less sensitive to it. And this is where things go off the rails. You see, normally cortisol is an anti-inflammatory signal. It tells your immune cells to stand down, stop releasing inflammation and cytokines. So when immune cells become cortisol resistant, your immune system loses its breaks. And this leads to the constant release of pro-inflammatory signals, even when nothing is wrong. And that, my friends, is chronic inflammation. Your immune system is acting like you're under attack 24-7, even on your couch, even at your desk, even when you're relaxing but you're stressed on the inside. And this is why chronic stress feels like body aches, pain, fatigue, brain fog, bloating. You're not imagining it, it's just that your system has backfired. Now let's transition to the other claim I made in the beginning of this video. Cortisol resistance not only hampers your immunity and increases inflammation, it literally creates metabolic destruction. I've had a lot of people coming to me wanting to lose weight. And even though we all know the answer, they still ask me if stress can be the reason for their weight gain. Yes, yes it can, and here's why. Okay, back to running from a tiger in the woods. What needs to happen in the body for you to be able to run? You need access to your blood sugar stores. And how does the body accomplish this? It turns on something called gluconeogenesis, which primarily happens in the liver. It's where your liver helps keep your blood sugar up when you're not eating anything. It also turns on insulin output from the pancreas in order to get that sugar that you dumped into your bloodstream into the cells for use. But here's the thing, you've probably heard this before. If your body thinks you're running from a tiger, but you're not actually running, you're just sitting there typing away on a screen or driving or basically doing anything but running or fighting, the sugar doesn't get used, yet you're constantly stressed, dumping cortisol, raising blood sugar and insulin, and your cells get annoyed of that too. So they downregulate the response to insulin and the messaging to get sugar into your cells, it doesn't work anymore either. So what do we do with elevated blood sugar all the time? We store it, we put it on as fat. And most of the time we're putting it onto our organs. Like this is one of the major ways you get fatty liver. And this fat is unfortunately very inflammatory. But wait, there's more. 
Chronic cortisol also can slow down your thyroid conversion. You need to be able to turn levels of T4 into T3 for use. And if you're not doing that, you could get tired, sluggish, cold, brain foggy. And cortisol also dumbs down your sex hormones. You don't need to be reproducing when you're running for your life. So, you know, bye-bye libido, good sleep, good mood. And cortisol is also catabolic, meaning it breaks down your muscle tissue so that it can use it for fuel. And this breakdown of muscle equals slower metabolism, even worse blood sugar control, and more fat gain. And so you see now how chronic cortisol elevation is basically metabolic sabotage from the inside out. And so when you look at all of this together, chronic cortisol elevation becomes a predictable, measurable biologic pattern. And the best part is, once you understand that, you can change it. Your metabolism isn't broken. Your immune system isn't failing you. They're responding exactly the way they were designed to, just to the wrong signal. And hopefully now that you understand the signaling, you can work on ways to modify it, which is what I'll be talking about in another video soon. So if you liked this explanation, please hit like for me and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it. I'm Dr. Ashley Frazee. I run a direct primary care clinic in Mesa, Arizona, where I basically leave insurance outside the door of my patient conversations. I hope you have the best day.